Next Radio with Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Thank you. Uh, it's always better to have low expectation rather than the big build-up, especially when you're in front of a bunch of British people. It's better to do it that way. First of all, thank you very much for allowing me to be here today, and thank you to Matt and James. Uh, it's really my honor. I first came to the UK about maybe 15 years ago to work with broadcasters, and over the years to watch people who started out very young achieve promise and now they're running you know all kinds of broadcasting organizations leading shows uh, producing top shows in top management levels uh, it's really exciting um, i work around the world and i work with a model there's nothing that i would ever say to a broadcaster that i haven't really faced myself i would never tell you to do something that i wouldn't try to do myself uh, first of all, before we even start, how many people in the room today actually create content? Okay, you're on the air or doing a podcast, doing a broadcast. How many people here manage those who create content? Okay, great. How many people work around content, marketing, selling it, getting it distributed across every platform imaginable? Okay, great. Excellent, good. It's kind of a, a mixed group of people. Um, I have three rules. And these are the three rules. And they have not changed uh, in the 40 years I've been working in broadcasting. Tell the truth, make it matter, and never be boring, okay? Uh, the books I've written have made their way around the world. They're in lots of languages. And the reason that, oh, that's a quick thing, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Easy on the thumb pressure. Um, <laughs> bottom line, the reason the books have made their way around the world is because they're really not about radio. They're about the struggle to be human and how to help audiences get through their day. How to be a storyteller. How to hold up a mirror and reflect life. Here's what all artists do. They observe life. They filter what they see through their own creative process and put it back out for other people. Whether it's music, whether it's talk, whether it's a painting, whether it's Picasso, that's what artists do. And this is an art form. I believe there are no boring stories, only boring storytellers. Nothing in this life is boring if you have somebody who's interested in communicating and telling that story. So the methods are really simple. But so is, you want to lose weight? Eh, it's easy. Eat less, exercise more. Hey, how hard can that be? Jeez. Oh, uh, you want to quit smoking? Hey, just put down the cigarette. How hard could that be? It's hard. To get people to change, and the way that I work around the world is in three parts. Need for change. Why do we have to work differently today? The next thing is how other people have changed. And finally, how you change. Have you ever heard the expression, the only person who likes change is a wet baby? <laughs> That's why what Chris was talking about a minute ago is so vital. Can you work with uncertainty? Can you conquer fear of change and go forward with what you know in your heart is right? And that's what powerful communicators do, okay? It takes courage to create. It takes courage to put yourself out there. And it's hard. The curse of our business as broadcasters and content creators is that the great ones make it look so easy, like any field. How hard can it be to kick a little football across a field? Try it. How hard can it be to be an actor and try, you know, saying lines in front of a camera? Try it. The great ones make it look easy, and that is the curse of our business in radio. Basically, audiences come to us, whether it's online or on air or any format, to be informed, entertained, inspired, persuaded, but most importantly, if you've ever been alone in a room or alone in a car or just really felt alone and suddenly you put your finger on that black box and you're not alone anymore. There's music that lifts you and inspires you. There's somebody talking to you and connecting you as a member of a human tribe to community and you're not alone anymore. Connecting audiences is really the gift we give to people. This is the model. Now I have to admit, I didn't develop this model in the UK. 
but I've worked a lot with this model in the UK. I worked a lot with BBC. I worked uh, in the beginning with LBC in 2002, 2003, and had the opportunity and the great honor to train many, many of the people that were involved in that project in the early days. And this was the model we used. And if any of you listen to Great Personality Radio, you are probably hearing this model. The first thing is focus. What is it you want to talk about? Well, there's four things that we know human beings absolutely go, shh, I got to hear this. First one, of course, it goes without saying, health and safety. And by the way, as broadcasters, your first job responsibility is to keep your people safe from harm. That's number one. Whatever else, you know, there's a lot of talk about public service, serving our public, keeping them safe, keeping them healthy, keeping them well, keeping them out of danger, goes without saying. After health and safety, money. And money is power. Money is politics. Saving money, ways you can save money. After health and money, comes emotion. If you touch the hearts of your audience, you will have them. And finally, the fourth category is transformation. How your life can be better tomorrow than it is today because of something you're hearing on the air or reading online or listening to online. Now, if you think about the commercials, you know, it's all transformational. Do you want to get rich? Do you want to grow hair? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to live in a better neighborhood? Uh, you know, buy this product or service and you will be happier. All those DIY shows, it's not knock down the wall and paint it chartreuse. It's that if you knock down the wall and paint it chartreuse, you will be happy. It's about transforming your life so your life is better. So this model, focus, what is it you want to talk about and know? Engage, what's in it for a listener? When I first came to England years ago, Trying to get people to say the word you on the radio and talk to one listener was like moving a boulder up a hill. Fifteen years later, it is my joy and pleasure. And I think, again, when Marks and Spencers did it, your Marks and Spencers, that kind of turned the tide. It helped. Uh, but again, if you can use the word you and talk to one individual, never, ever put anything on the air if you can't answer the question, why should someone listen to this? Or if you could imagine a neon sign blinking in front of you that says, here's why you need to listen to this. And then whatever you say next should be your opening line. Engage the audience. And if you use the word you, we are blessed and lucky in the English language. I work in 35 countries and I'm not always uh, having the luxury to work in English. In English, we have the same word for the group as we do for the individual. That is a gift of our language. Use it and use it well. You can almost never say the word you too many times. Have you ever? Can you imagine? And there's a trick. If you can work to substitute I, me, we, us, or our for the word you, it will be more powerful. So instead of... I'm going to be interviewing Greg Simpson about Canadian Music Week coming up next. It becomes, if you're interested in global music and you feel like winning a trip to Canada, you're not going to want to miss meeting Greg Simpson coming up next, okay? It's about not what we have to give, which has been the traditional broadcast. What we have to give, it's what the listener gets. Imagine each person who's tuning into you has a bucket. What pieces of gold are you putting into that bucket? What do they get? It's not I'm going to be talking with, it's you will hear. I don't have tickets to give away, you have a chance to win tickets. Make everything about the listener and be putting gold into that bucket. Opinion position. If you do news, I never want to hear your opinion position on the air, but if you haven't thought about a topic or an issue or a subject enough to have formed an opinion or position, you don't care. And if you don't care, it's words on a screen. Make it matter. That's part of powerful radio. This is not a job for actors. This is a job for communicators and storytellers. Opinion is what you think. Position is what happened to you in the world that leads you to this. Finally, storytelling. And I loved that the people were here from Sierra Leone. I love working in Africa because it's a whole country of storytellers. 
You are in the story business. Your job is once upon a time in a far off land, there was a princess and a monster, and then one day, the minute your audience goes, and then what happened? What happened next? You own them. You own them the minute they want to know what happened next. Uh, one thing in storytelling when we work with broadcasters is most broadcasters were learned to do attribution at the top. Who said it? If you do the what before the who, it sometimes works better. Why should somebody listen? What's in it for the listener before you attribute? So instead of, according to a press release from the Museum of Modern Art, the Picasso will be here through Thursday, flip it. If you haven't seen the Picasso, you only have till Thursday. That's according to a press release from the Museum of Modern Art. And when I first worked at the BBC, I was giving them heart attacks when we told them to attribute at the bottom. But slowly, because they need to grow audiences, these methods are 100%. They never don't work. But just like putting down the cigarette or exercising more and eating less, you actually have to do them to make it work. We've had incredible success globally, and I'm really excited because I can put this before you. But then, just like any model, it has to be you doing the brick laying and doing the heavy lifting. Uh, back to storytelling. What happened? Where did it happen? Why? Who? And how could it be prevented? How does a story affect your listener? How can you describe things more visually? Let's talk about the visual. There's been some new brain science that's available. It's stunning. But you already know. One of the main things that came out in this new research was men are visual. Um, it's something we've known forever sexually, but it turns out men are visual with everything. When they did the MRI of the male brain, the functional MRI, and you could actually see a guy's brain working. When the male subject was given either a picture or enough verbal cues so that he could imagine it uh, visually, the learning centers in the male brain lit up. It was stunning. So now we know men are visual. So again, one of my favorite analogies, and this came out in a focus group. Okay, let's say, for example, um, and I keep using Greg because he's an old friend, so I can just pull him in here. Um, if I live with Greg and I want him to bring home milk on the way home, I could text him and go, Greg, could you bring home some milk? I've got a 50-50 shot. He's a busy guy. He's not going to retain it. But if I say to Greg, imagine our refrigerator, Imagine the top shelf. Imagine your coffee or tea, no milk. Imagine tomorrow morning, no milk. Imagine the cat, no milk. Okay, I've just upped my odds because I've given him a visual. But if I really want this man to bring milk home, I might just text a photo of our refrigerator with no milk in it. The minute you give him a visual. So suddenly, powerful radio, it's not a beautiful sunset, it's a tangerine sky. Go back to song lyrics, Bob Dylan, to dance beneath a diamond sky with one hand waving free. Make those word pictures. Talk to the blind man. The minute you can describe things visually, even if you have video that goes along with what you are talking about on, online, the more you can make the word pictures talking to the blind man, the more powerful it is and the more it will stick in the mind of the male listeners. With women, and again, this is about 80%, so nothing is ever 100%. With women, they liked the visual. Men actually need it. Men actually need it. With women, if you touch her heart, her learning centers will open up and she will learn. And it is stunning. So what's the number one question every man on the planet hates? What are you feeling? Ugh! They hate it. They're not wired up. Hot, cold, hungry, horny. You know, they're not wired up to go deep. So if you would like to go up to the next level as a broadcaster, a writer, a speaker, and a communicator, it's about learning this foreign language. If you are a man, learn the language of emotion. If you are a woman, learn the language of pictures. And if you can do this, you will instantly become a more powerful broadcaster tomorrow. And try it at home and see what happens. It's so amazing. Like, a guy will be sitting with a woman. They'll be watching television. And he's looking at her out of the corner of his eye. He actually considers it time spent together. 
No woman on planet Earth, unless you're doing this, it's not time spent together. It is stunning. So everything you know about adult contemporary soft string music touching the hearts of women, everything you know anecdotally, we now have brain science that proves it out. Um, again, how, you always look at how come you're putting the story on the air. How would you tell it to a friend? Is it conversational? Don't read. Um, can you make it better? How would you tell this story if you had to get another job and you needed to put this on a demo? Is it your best way? Um, my real job, what I do all day long, is air check. I go around the world and I, I'm a show fixer. By the way, I never get called when a show is going great. I get called when they're starting a show up or it hasn't achieved promise and they'd like to work to make the show better. They want to invest in making it better. So I go all around the world and I sit with people in a room and we work with audio. Never work without the audio. Then turn on the audio and listen. And this is the criteria. Is it boring? Did it go too long? If it feels long, it's long. It's your only gauge because there's no logic to time on the radio. There's no logic. If something's in power, five minutes feels like one. If it's out of power, one minute feels like five. Don't use logic. Radio and logic, wee! They have nothing to do with each other. Was there humor? What are the visuals? Was there new information? Was there great storytelling? What about talkable topic when the radio goes off or the internet goes off and people talk to each other over dinner? Did you give somebody something they could talk to somebody else about? That's part of the gift. What was the unique journey that they could only get from you? Nowhere else on planet Earth but from you. And finally, what was the connection to the audience? More air check rules, but I'm running tight on time. So again, always work with audio. Praise publicly, criticize privately. Always have a solution if you present a problem. Uh, listen like a listener. And you know, Chris was talking about listening, the gift of listening. Carl Faber, the psychologist, said, the greatest gift you can ever give to another human being is just to hear what they're saying. Not just the words, but what they're telling you. Listen, it is your greatest gift as a broadcaster and a communicator. Um, sometimes working with older audio is great because you've forgotten what you meant to say and you have fresh ears, clean. You can listen like a listener. Uh, people don't resist their own idea. Don't make somebody do something, especially not a creative artist. If they want to do it, make a case for how they can work better. And again, I mentioned the only person who likes change is that wet baby. We learn one dance step, we perfect it, and by God, if we can go out of this life doing that same dance, that's our nature. So we have to fight our nature. Uh, this is how you can get in touch with me. Um, this is the book. This is uh, my information if anybody would like to be in touch. Focal Press is offering a discount for this conference, and there's an ad uh, if you go to beyondpowerfulradio.com or if you go to Focal Press's website. The code is SRK89 uh, for the 20% discount for the book. Uh, but again, if any of you would like to be in touch, I'm going to be around all day, and uh, you can get in touch. It's at Geller Media or Twitter at VGeller. Uh, and I really look forward to meeting a lot of new people and also seeing a lot of people who I haven't seen in a long time. And it thrills my heart, and it is my great honor to see you again and see what's happening in your life. So again, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring. That is the core message, and thank you. <laughs>